Besides the front questions over on the left, Jack. Joey, did you ever check anybody bigger than Hunter Dickinson? And what was that like when you had your knee up his butt? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I ever regard someone his uh, his height, um, his size as well, but um, just got to fight him as much as you can because you know he's he's a load down there. Um, so I just gotta, had to work hard, and it was a tough job. Down the right, Matt. Oh, okay. Joey, obviously this some struggles you've had here the last couple of years, but in that second half when you're diving for balls, hit a couple of threes, and I don't know if you heard the crowd chanting your name there in the second half. Did you take a second to think about that? Did what does that mean to you that? This crowd kind of had your back, even through some some tough times for you. Yeah, um, you know it's it's awesome that they keep supporting me, but um, you know my job is just to stay focused on the game during that time. So, you know, to be honest with you, I didn't really notice it a ton. Uh, I know my teammates really jacked up for me, but um, you know, it was it was it was just an awesome game, an awesome moment for my team and myself. Over on the left, Kyle. Joey, another one about defending Hunter. Tom mentioned that there was a little discussion about the best way to kind of go about it, given how they were calling the game and that you kind of spoke up and, and it, you know, ended up working out well. Can you kind of take us through that process? Say that again? I'm just kind of defend, deciding how you want to defend Hunter based on how the officials were calling the game. Um, <clears throat> I was just going to try to get physical with him, um, try to front them a little bit. But, you know, there's only so much you could do with a guy. Who's, who, he's, he's a really good player. Um, he's that big. And you just got to get physical as much as you can, make make things tough for them, because you know they're going to look to go inside and get them get them some post looks. But you know, let's try to just try to outwork them. I guess that's really all you can say. Uh, could you describe what it's like to play in this game with the zone like that? And I mean, a year ago it was so much different. Yeah, it's it's a rival game. Um, last year it felt a little bit different just because we didn't have that. Uh, those fans, even when you go on the road, you don't, you don't have the hostile environment. So this year was a lot different to get back. It felt good to get back to that environment and of that rival game. So um, they really helped us out today. They helped us uh, just with some ups and downs in the game. And can you describe what it was like at halftime? What was the message? We didn't think we played our best half. Um, Michigan did some good things. Uh, we thought I got a little bit loose with the ball there. Uh, offensive rebounds was kind of the problem the whole game. And I think they out-rebounded us. So. We just needed to be tougher. Come out the second half. We need to be tougher. Um, get on our get on our own run a little bit and and go from there. Second row. Uh, Joey, it seemed like in the first half Malik was kind of having his gotten a rhythm offensively, and then the second half it was kind of you. Can you just talk a little bit about how important it is to get offensive production from that four spot from you or Malik? Yeah, I think it's really important. Um, you know, Malik's been shooting the crap out of ball all year. Um, you know, I, I've struggled a little bit there, but I've you know picked it up here and there. So. Whenever one of us is out, we got to pick up a slack and uh, produce from that from that position. So, I think we're doing a really good job of that. And you know, I don't know a lot of teams that have kind of the talent and skill that we have at the four position where they can play two guys in and out like that. So it's it's a really good really good thing for our team. In the back, Ian. How, how did you see the way AJ came out in that second half, and how big was he for you guys to really pull away at the end? AJ did a really good job. You know, he gets. Um, he does a really good job of getting downhill, and he's he's um, he's big for his position. So um, there's times where he really helps us out. There's times when Tyson really helps us out. And uh, today was one of those days where AJ just did an unbelievable job. Uh, I think he had a double double. So um, you know this this was an AJ Helger game. In the back on the Joey, you started this rivalry as kind of an outsider trying to learn about it through experience and. Today, you played like a veteran who's been a part of it and knows the emotions that go through it. What was that like for you having a game like that? And how does that help the younger guys like Max and AJ who are still learning about this rivalry trying to play it like it is? Yeah, I mean, you know, you hear about it because it's, it's one of the best rival, rivalries in uh, college sports. Um, so I got to see it for a year. And we split games, I think, the first year I sat out. But you just got to see kind of the, the extra get up that there is for this game. Um, and today, you know, we had that edge. We played like it was a rival game. So um, you just hope those guys can take on the same kind of mentality that, you know, this is a game that you got to win. This is a game where you got to be tough. You mentioned the bikes. So, so much talk about the, the job that AJ did, but the bucket that Tyson had at the end of that first half, how big of a momentum swing was that for you guys when, in a one point game going into the locker room? It was a big moment, uh, momentum swing. You know, buckets at the end of halves are always big momentum swings. Um, almost let them get a bucket as well. So 
Uh, but going into the halftime, that was big. I think we had a four-point lead going into the half, and we really felt like we could have played a lot better and tougher. Time for two more for Joey. Audrey first. Izzo came in here, and obviously, you know, he tells us how this place means the world to him. And so for you guys to have a performance like you did, you know, the Breslin to be jam-packed with people again, do you see those emotions as the game is playing out? And I guess how much did you guys really kind of want to, I don't want to say win this game for him, but I mean, how much do you see those emotions and realize what this rivalry means to him? Um, I mean, we, we already know how much it means to him from practice, um, but... He, you know, he likes getting the crowd jacked up, and he, he's, he's, he shows his emotions, and it's awesome to have play for a coach like that. Um, at first, you know, you kind of adjust to it because not every coach is like that, and not every person is like that. Um, but this is a game that when coach you know, shows him how much he cares about this rivalry, you know, you want to win it for him, uh, and it's his birthday tomorrow too, so we wanted to win it for him as well because of that. It's like the crowd went kind of crazy after that Keon Coleman bucket. Um, what was it like to see your, your teammate accomplish that and do it against Michigan? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple of buckets during the game where people were just going crazy. I think Gabe had one on the, um, on the lob, the fast break lob. Gabe had another three where the crowd went pretty crazy. So um, those are just huge momentum swings, and you got to feed off of those. Um, and they're always, they're always more important. It's more important to get a stop after them as well so you can get back down and hopefully get another bucket. Thanks, Joe. Yep.